OpenAI has launched their GPT store. This is something they've been talking about for a couple months now, and there's been a lot of hype built up about it. So today I'm gonna to be talking about what is currently available in the GPT store, how it works, how much it costs, what I think the implications of the AI industry as a whole are. Let's get into it. The first thing I wanna talk about is the fact that, you know, like what is the GPT store, kind of getting down to the basics, essentially, um, it allows AI models like GPT-4, Dolly, um, to be linked together and to make some really interesting tools, apps, as, as it were. So essentially, a lot of people are talking about the GPT store as, you know, as this is kind of like the Apple iPhone app store moment um, where all these app store came out. And the GPT store right now, I think it's important to know, it's accessible via a new tab in the, um, if you go to chat GPT. So typically on the left-hand side, you're gonna see all of the different chats that you've made. Now that the GPT store is there, and if you wanna check it out, you just click on Explore GPT. That's going to be in the top left hand corner. Um, so you can see that uh, right there. Once you click on that, you're going to be able to see a whole bunch of new GPTs. You're also going to be able to see a search bar at the top. This is something that's amazing because previously when they launched their plugins, um, this kind of fell flat because essentially if you wanted to search for plugins when they first launched the GPT plugins, it was just a little panel and there was like a handful of plugins on there and you just could click next page, next page, next page to like 100 pages. There was no search function. It was impossible to find things. Honestly, it was kind of bizarre that they rolled out the feature like that. And it was interesting because Sam Altman said he didn't think that ChatGPT plugins had product market fit, but honestly, if they just put a search bar, I bet they would have gotten 90% more users. Um, then there was a couple other funny things. In any case, I think they're trying to fix all of that. So on the GPT store, you now have a search bar at the top where you can actually search for things. Um, you also have a couple different categories. You have Dolly, which of course is their image generators. And you also have a little featured section at the top. Something that I think is interesting is the trending section. They also have by ChatGPT. So these are ones specifically made by ChatGPT. But again, what's interesting is like one of those is literally just Dolly, which is just built into to chat GPT. So sometimes I'm, I'm what, going through this, I'm wondering like how much of this is just redundant, um, kind of like you, they're just bringing awareness to a feature of chat GPT and calling it like a, an app versus something that's a fully fledged app. Um, so it's, you know, it's kind of interesting. And my opinion is a little bit different because I'm currently building AI box, which is a no code AI app builder and marketplace that allows you to link together thousands of AI tools, right? So think like you're adding mid journey and 11 labs and uh, all those kind of like tools with all of the open AI stuff. So I'm, I'm kind of have maybe a bit bigger of a vision than what everybody is looking for or what everyone is used to. But in any case, what I think is really interesting here is just the fact that um, you have to have a premium account to use this chat GPT. So if you have the free account where you get three point chat GPT 3.5, this isn't going to work. You're going to need um, the premium. You're going to have to pay essentially to get access to this. So what I think is very interesting as well is that you can essentially browse all of this. There's a bunch of different categories. So I do think this is going to be helpful in finding, for example, apps for lifestyle, writing, research, programming, education, like you pick your category and you'll be able to find stuff. Um, what I will say though, is right now as they are launching all of these GPTs um, available include um, some really interesting ones from um, all trails. They have a code tutor from Khan Academy. They have a content designer from Canva. Um, and all of this is free to use, which I think is absolutely amazing. But of course, that's for now. Canva, Khan Academy, all trails. These people have to make money. So at some point, there's going to be a monetization method enabled, I would assume. Um, otherwise, this is just going to be treated kind of as like a freemium place where you're not going to get amazing apps to just get a taste and then people are going to refer you over to their website. You're already kind of seeing that now when you look at some of the apps on the website. Um, for example, Khan Academy has one that is like a code tutor and right at the bottom, it says, you know, buy Khanacademy.org. Now, why don't they just say like on the app store, on Apple's app store, they would just say buy Khan Academy. Why do they have to say buy Khanacademy.org? It's because they don't want you to not know where it comes from. They need you to go to their website so they can actually make money from you. So I do think that that is an interesting element that I hope they solve soon because I think the quality of the apps and tools on here will improve dramatically if people can actually make money from them. Otherwise, why would someone invest time and energy into building these? So right now, building these GPTs um, happens with OpenAI's GPT Builder. This doesn't require any code, but it also doesn't make these very complex. So essentially, you go to the G their GPT Builder and you just say, hey, build me an app that you know generates articles that are like a thousand words long, and it has a frequently asked question section, it has a common misconception section, and it has some interesting tables, right? So you could say like that, and it could theoretically generate it. 
Unfortunately, what I've seen again with this is it doesn't do like multi-shot generations. Um, so like when you have, uh, for example, you're having like, if you want to get this, uh, our high quality output, let's say you needed like a 2000 word article for your blog, you couldn't just use this. It, this is going to have the same limitation where essentially ChatGPT has a problem where it only really generates like 700 to 1000 words max in one generation. So using these tools, I have been testing them and I'm getting the same problem. It's just generating them to be a thousand or 700, a thousand words. And it's not, even if I tell it to go longer, it's so it, it's just shorter. So I'm not a hundred percent sure at what point this, um, is like, um, multiple like, automating your actual process, right? Doing like multiple chat steps at once. Like that's what I would envision and what I would like to see this do. That's what I'm building on AI box. Um, right now your GPTs can be trained on specific content, like a cookbook collection or a company's proprietary code base. I think this is fantastic. Um, we saw examples of this, but I also will say that, um, you can just upload documents and there's features on chat GPT right now that can read through your documents. Um, but maybe this is cool because you have a tool that you could share with everyone in your organization instead of having to, you know, tell everyone, upload these documents to a specific chat and then refer to this. Right. So I do think that there's, it's like a, a bookmark or it's like a, a central hub for those types of things. And for that use case, I do think this is fantastic where it falls short in other areas. I think that's probably a pretty solid one. So right now developers have to verify the profiles. Then they submit to GPT. Uh, their GPT to OpenAI's review situ um, system, which has humans and some automated stuff. Now, I will say the review system has had a little bit of controversy. Um, someone on Twitter went viral because apparently they made a Epstein GPT, which was like all the court documents related to Jeffrey Epstein. They threw them into a GPT and you could query it and get answers about what happened in the court case. So of course, um, th they thought this would be interesting because this is in the news and people are looking into this right now. But uh, OpenAI banned it, said this goes against our terms of use. Um, and so I think a lot of people were kind of like, felt like that was a red flag for why a centralized platform like this might not be good, why we want to have more open source things. So there's both sides of the debate and I understand that. I'm not taking a side, I'm just saying this is something to be aware of, um, that there are some limitations that these apps can get banned and a lot of people aren't happy about that in particular. So OpenAI definitely um, is pushing forward to try to make some really impressive technology and some really impressive apps. Um, specifically, uh, Sam Altman has tweeted saying that he is looking to improve the quality of the apps on here um, when he was kind of asking for like feedback uh, at, the, at the beginning of the year. So what I do think is quite interesting is that initially developers can't charge for any of these GPTs, right? Like I mentioned earlier, but OpenAI does plan to start a GPT builder revenue program in the first quarter of this year. So essentially that's gonna be allowing people in the United States to build um, tools and earn income based on the user engagements. Now, again, something that has faced a little bit of criticism because it seems kind of opaque. There's not a lot of details around exactly what that entails and what that means, how much you're actually gonna get paid. It seems sort of like a Spotify revenue share, but you don't know exactly how much you're making. And they also said that the most popular ones on the platform will be monetizable. So let's say like, but no one really knows what that threshold is. Maybe you have 10,000 uses a month, but you're not as popular as one with a hundred thousand. So you don't get it. So there's people that are kind of complaining about that. In any case, this whole dev store or this whole GPT store was announced at OpenAI's first dev day, which happened um, last year, but all of this was delayed. Um, and I think they were trying to get it out in, I heard November, December last year, all of it was delayed because of course Sam Altman was fired and he came back and a lot of people said it had to do with this app store. So they kind of hunkered down and refocused on it. In any case, whatever happened, uh, that allegedly delayed this a little bit. Um, but I do think this is an exciting time. A lot of these GPTs are coming out and I think this is going to help really democratize generative AI and building some simple app creations. This isn't the complex stuff that, uh, you would that we would hope to be able to get. Maybe this will improve in complexity, one can hope. Right now it is quite simple and kind of rudimentary. Um, but what I do think it might have a bit of an impact on is some consultancies. So people that are consulting, they're essentially building similar AI apps for clients. Um, and so I don't really know what the long-term effects of the GPT store are gonna be on some of these AI industry consultants that are kind of building out some of these simple tools because now you essentially can build them or find other people that have made these simple versions. Now the next step is going to be making more complicated versions. And if you really wanna automate your workflows to a high level, I recommend getting on the wait list for AI Box. That is the no-code AI app builder marketplace that I'm currently developing that allows you to access all of the AI models, all of the open source AI models, 
um, and to build out really complex workflows, link together multiple AI models, you have a lot of control um, over how it looks and acts, and I'm really excited to get that launch. In any case, I think this GPT store from OpenAI is very exciting. This is getting the ball rolling. People are understanding they can build these AI tools. They can make money from these AI tools. And while it's quite simple, I actually think this is a great opportunity for people to learn how to build this and automate some simple tasks that they might do over and over again. So I'll definitely keep you up to date on how this is adopted and how this kind of plays out and um, applies to the industry at large. We're super excited with the progress that OpenAI is making and this GPT store is a great step in democratizing AI.